Hello, this is Kenneth Reese, founder, owner, and operator of WatagaOnline.com. Glad to be back with you again, and what a treat today as uh, our special guest is the man that for the last 10 years has been at the helm of the Boone Police Department, and today he's hanging it up, and we'll <laughs> talk about where what he's going to do and, and some of his time at uh, Boone Police, but Chief Dana Crawford. Hello, how are you today? Hey, good, good morning, Kenneth. Good, it's good to be with you. Thank you for the opportunity and taking the time. Oh, man, you're a busy guy. And as we record this, this is Thursday, April 30th, at just after 9.30 in the morning, and you are wrapping up your final day uh, at the uh, Boone Police. So tell me what today has been like so far and what the rest of the day may be. Well, the, the plan is, is just to get everything nailed down making that transition with, with my folks and, um, you know, getting a chance to say goodbye this afternoon. And hopefully uh, there'll be some folks around with this whole COVID virus thing. We've been, we've been trying to socially distance ourselves um, and make sure that we can still provide services to the community. But because of that, it's, uh, it's put a real hamper on my ability to say goodbye to them. So, uh, hopefully there'll be around some folks and we can do elbow bumps or high, or well, not high fives or wave at each other or whatever. But uh, it's uh, it's mixed emotions, you know. Certainly today for me, um, after you put time and effort and emotion and heart and soul into something, it's hard to say goodbye. It is, it is for me. But there comes a time in your career where you got to where you got to make choices, and I think it it all comes to us um at, at different points in our career so after 32 years i think it's i think it's time to do something a little bit different anyway well you're kind of going full circle in your next endeavor in life uh, let's back up a moment though okay you've been, you've been with boone for 10 yeah. years yeah your predecessor bill post had also held that position for 10 years what is it with you guys just hanging around for 10 years and, and then leaving? <laughs> well, <laughs> just, just 10 years. Well, you got to figure, you know, Bill Post had already put in 20 years at, at uh, a couple of different agencies, you know, mainly with at Hickory Police Department. Yeah. And so it takes you, if you're coming through the ranks, by the time you get into the promotional process, if you're going from a corporal or a sergeant, to a lieutenant, to a captain, then that, that eats up a lot of your career. Mm -hmm. uh, is just jump because you know you you want to spend three or four or five good years at each one of those positions. Well, each one of those positions at four or five years, then you're looking at twenty plus years, and so that's only going to leave you about ten or twelve years to get in a thirty year career. Yeah. So I think I think that's the biggest thing. You know, um, you know, I look at at uh, Andy LeBeau, who's going to be. Uh, who has already been announced will be the interim uh, police chief uh, starting on May 1 or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And he's much further into his career than that. He lacks probably five or, you know, four or five, six years into his career, unless he wants to hang out and do it longer. But, uh, and, and so it's all about timing. Um, yeah. how, how much of your career you've spent doing other things. You were announced as Boone's police chief on October the 5th, 2009. So you're, oh, just, okay. you're just a couple of months shy of being there 11 years. Before that, you spent a good bulk of your time uh, in Avery County. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You worked for Avery County Sheriff's Department, yes. Sheriff Mountain Police Department. Yes. And I guess the better part of your career was spent at Beach Mountain Police Department. Is that right? Yeah, that, yeah 18 years. Yeah. <laughs> does it seem like uh does it seem like it's been this long in law enforcement 32 years no no um i remember the day that um i went to work at the sheriff's office um in 1988 uh, july the i believe it was july the 15th 1988 i started as a a dispatcher slash uh jailer um and and back in those days you did both and there wasn't um, uh, emergency medical dispatch. There wasn't um, uh, all of this technical stuff 
I mean, there wasn't, you know, there was no computers in a CAD system. Yeah. Uh, there was none of that. You know, you, you hit a button or you paged out the rescue squad and say, and you'd tell them to go here and go there. Uh, so that's how the technology has changed so much. We did have 911 uh, at the time, but uh, not certainly not uh, to what it is now. Now it's, it's like walking into a NASA, um, you know, uh, into Houston <laughs> yeah. and, and looking at all the computers in there. It's, it's surreal how that has changed over the past 30 years. It's incredible. Um, while we're talking about your past, let's talk about the future a little bit. And then I want to go back and, and talk about some things you've done at Boone Police Department. After today, again, today for our viewer, today is Chief Crawford's uh, last day as Chief of Boone Police. But you are actually headed back to somewhere that you kind of started it all, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, I started Mayland Community College in 1985 in their criminal justice program and was actually supposed to, <laughs> this is, this is a, again, a little bit of irony, I was supposed to go to Appalachian State, and you know there was just something that told me, no, this 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 is just not for me right now. And so I chose instead to go to Mayland Community College. My brother and I we went down there um, and talked to you know the folks that were in the criminal justice program. At the time, we started uh, in their criminal justice program in August of 1985. And so in the midst of that, in 1987, I went, to their, I went to basic law enforcement training through Mayland Community College because they were giving us credit toward our degree. So I wanted to take advantage of that too. So we took a, like a six month hiatus to, to go through the basic law enforcement training program. And so, I, yeah, I'm coming full circle, absolutely coming full circle back into a program that I went through myself. And that's, that's sort of neat, you know, to be able to be a part of that and come through that and see the success that I have and how I've been blessed mm -hmm. um, and then be able to come back and give back into that program too. So what were your, uh, 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 if our viewers didn't pick up on it, Chief Crawford is going back there to teach. What is your official, do you have an official title? Yeah, it'll be uh, the director of the Basic Law Enforcement Training Academy. So. And correct me if I'm wrong, um, there are only two programs uh, locally that do that. Well, Appalachian has their studies, but community college level, Wilkes Community and Malin, is that right? Well, pretty much every community college now has, has a basic law enforcement oh, really? training academy. Uh, the state has given that because the state Although they used to run their own academies, I don't, I don't think they do that anymore uh, at the at the at Salemburg or Edneyville Justice Academies. But um, that's given to the community colleges to do that, and actually the state reimburses the community colleges for their costs on that. Oh, I didn't realize and, that. Yeah, and so Caldwell's got their own program. Western Piedmont's got their own. I mean, just about every community college has their own program. Haywood Tech you know, uh, Asheville yeah. Buncombe, you know, everybody. Has that, I know has that just been in recent years? Well, Caldwell's been doing it for, for years and years. Wilkes, is, Wilkes Community College has been yeah. doing it for years and years. Um, so, no, it's not, it's really not very new. Um, okay. Uh, there's very few uh, community colleges that don't have a basic uh, law enforcement training academy. Well, and the reason I asked that, I went to Wilkes Community College for radio and television, and right, right beside of us was the law enforcement folks. Right. And this was in the early 90s, 92, yeah. 93. And I, st I still think at that time, it was just Wilkes and Malin. I, yeah. uh, if Caldwell had one, uh, a lot of folks, I guess, just didn't go because there were a ton of folks from Boone and Watauga County that would go down to that program. And uh, so I was very, very familiar with, with uh, those yeah. folks in the 90s. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure when Caldwell started those. You know, Caldwell, uh, they were big into the medical yes. side of things. Uh, they were doing a lot of the nursing yeah. programs, um, x-ray. I know uh, I had a friend of mine who went through the radiology program at Caldwell Community College. So they may not have had 
uh, a basic law enforcement training academy at that point in time. So just about everybody's on board with that now, though. Well, while we're talking about that, let's let's focus back to your time at Boone. We've just talked about changes in law enforcement on the education level. Uh, yeah. How many how many schools are offering that now? Um, what are some things, uh, maybe two or three things that pop in your mind over the last 10 years with you at the helm of Boone Police that has changed the most dramatically? Um, I think a lot of it has gone to the accountability levels that we hold ourselves at now probably more than we used to. The politics um, of, of law enforcement has changed dramatically as more than and what it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, we have taken a lot of hard hits in law enforcement. Um, maybe a few of those have been justified. I think a lot of it was unjustified. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we've lost a lot of respect. I think our communities have changed a lot. We're now more involved in our communities than we were, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think that that part of it was good, but we were we have always been, you know, been a part of this community. Yeah. And we've always tried to do those right things. And one of the things that, that Boom PD, that we were on the front and cutting edge of that I'm, I'm pretty proud of this one is the body cameras, the accountability of the body cameras. And, you know, used to, you know, I might get a complaint on an officer and someone say, well, you know, your officer was rude to me and he said this, or he right. said that. Well, you know, we may, we may work on that a week to see what the officer said, you know, or did he say it? Did he not say it? Did he do it? Did he not do it? And it take up a ton of time for three or four people. Yeah. Well, the body cameras now, you know, somebody, someone calls me and complains or they want to come in and complain. I'll say, well, let me check the, 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 the camera footage. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of those disappear. A lot of those complaints are like, oh, uh, well, okay. <laughs> and you know because because it's going to tell the story the the thing the part of that that they're not foolproof yeah. you know because it's technology just like you and I this morning we were we were trying to get logged on you know to on the audio well because it's because it's technology you're going to have failures yeah and yeah. and we've had failures with cameras i mean some you know last week we had or maybe this week before last, I can't, one of our, the batteries just, you know, essentially just melted out mm -hmm. of the, of the body cam, but we were one of the first agencies in the state to have body cameras. And the reason we got into it, this was, you know, it, it wasn't, yes, it was for accountability. It was also for evident, evidentiary value for the courts, but it was also um, because I didn't have the money to go put in-car cameras in, because that's about a five, $5,000 lick for each car. Wow. Well, I could buy one body camera for about $1,000 at that time. It's come, and those have come way down. So on a grant, we were able to get a grant to the governor's crime commission. I could buy every officer a, a camera. And so now we're into the second and third generations of those cameras. Um, but because of that, we were one of the first to be able to do that in the state. And so that was that some of the forward thinking that the where we were at at that time. And so pretty proud of that that aspect of it. Yeah, that's uh, that's good to know. I didn't realize that uh, that Boone Police were one of the first ones in the state for that. Yeah, um, that that's very cool. How do you see now, as opposed to when you started, um, uh, like arrest? and offenses and that kind of thing. What have you seen the most increase of? Is it drug related? Is it, uh, you know, I guess domestic situations? Uh, is, is there one thing that you just stands out at you that has increased more, let's say in the last five or six years than when you took over the helm? Yes, um, unfortunately and disturbingly. Um, I would have to say it's internet crimes against children. Mm that that is by far or, and maybe maybe it's because we are one of the leading agencies in the state and we have one of the most um well-trained professional experts here at the police department in the state 
Um, we, we've actually gotten an award from the, the SBI for that. He's gotten national recognition. Uh, our investigator in that has gotten national recognition uh, from the U.S. Attorney General's office for yeah. his abilities. <clears throat> so that may be part of it. And the, and the reason I'm saying that, that it's so big, but I tell you, this is something that no, that a lot of folks don't, don't want to talk about. Um, it's, it's not only just local, it's not only just state, it's not only national, it's international. And we've worked several cases. Uh, we worked cases in Australia, we've worked cases in Canada, um, and we've worked a lot of cases local and helped out other counties and, 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 and cities uh, learn how to do this. But that's the largest increase, and, and I think it's a lot mostly because of social media and how easy it is to get this type of material and how badly that we are abusing our children. Yeah, and you talk about that. Um, you know, I started my outlets, I think, 10 years ago now, too. And uh, I deal largely with social media and that kind of thing. And it, it's been very interesting from my perspective to see how that has changed because you think about it in those 10 years, that's an entire generation of children, at least yeah. one full generation that have always known of social media. Yeah. They've never known life without it. And then you take, you know, sections of those 10 years and, and those children grew up and went to college and, or work and they knew social media. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, when you say how easy it is for temptation and all of that to happen, it's, it's really startling when you stop and think about it. But right. I've, uh, you talked about some of the cases y'all have worked. I have seen numerous press releases from the district attorney's office from Western North Carolina and uh, Boone police is usually mentioned right there on uh, near the top when it comes to these kind of cases yeah. uh, all across North Carolina. So that's been a great effort on y'all's part <clears throat> to, uh, to really get that program sustained and, uh, yeah. Use those and, we, and we have built it, but, and we've intentionally built it. Yeah. So that's, that is, that is one of the things, you know, and the, that comes with that is also human trafficking. These are things, these are terms that we didn't talk about a lot 10 years ago. Yeah. It was, was the internet crimes against children. And, and let me tell you, that is, we are fighting the good fight with that. Um, but I tell you what, we need a lot more agencies doing their part also. And they can't, you know, a lot of it's just because they don't, one, they don't know how, or two, they don't have the expertise, but they need to get on board. If they're not on board, they need to get on board because it's happening in their backyards. And I don't, I don't care what profession that you're involved in. I don't care what your status is. We've, we've investigated them all from, politicians to preachers to teachers to mm -hmm. coaches to whatever you name it we 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 have been involved with with that and it's people that you don't suspect but it's an addiction just like everything i won't say everything else but just like gambling or 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 alcohol or or sex or whatever it is this this can become an addiction to you um secondly to that would be you know the human trafficking it's going on in every community. Um, and those are things that it's, re they're really hard to work, but it's here and it's among us. Um, and then thirdly, w when you're talking about trafficking, you got to involve the drugs with that. We're seeing so much more methamphetamine, you know, 10 years ago, it was all about meth labs and, you know, Oh, that's right. I, I had forgot about that. That was a hot topic here in Watauga oh, yeah. County, especially. Oh, yeah, it was huge. If you remember, uh, uh, Mark Shook, when, when Mark was the sheriff, he testified in, con in front of Congress on how bad Watauga C County was and is. And it was going on across the nation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but now we're seeing, you don't have to, you don't have to go build your own lab now. It's so cheap and it's so pure yeah. uh, that's coming across the Mexican border. Um, and that's being made by super labs. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the cartels have switched over from um, cocaine over to methamphetamine because you can make it, you can make it pure. 
<laughs> it's easy to ship, but then you've also got heroin. And those are, that is just riddled many communities. And fortunately, we have fought that fight. <coughs> Excuse me. We have fought that fight a lot here in Watauga County to keep that from happening here. So we've tried to keep it nailed down. But the methamphetamine cases are just unreal. Excuse me. Yeah, by all means, do what you need to do there. Um, I'll ask you just a couple of more questions. I know you've got a lot going on today. And again, <clears throat> we're speaking with um, on his final day, Chief Dana Crawford of Boone Police Department as he wraps up his tenure at Boone Police Department and heading to Malin Community College in Spruce Pine. Is that right? Yeah. To, yeah. He'll take on a teaching role there. Um, how unique do you think your position as Chief of Police has been in regards to um, Boone and ASU? Um, the university has grown and that's mm. no, that's no secret. Yeah. It's going to continue to grow. That's no yeah. secret. Um, the folks over there have really done a stand up job in the past couple of years now of establishing, uh, well, they've had a police department, but kind of reestablishing and, and bringing in a new chief and they have some really exciting <clears throat> things happening over there. But, yeah. uh, how unique, I guess, as, as opposed to your counterparts, let's say in West Jefferson or Jefferson or Banner Elk or what? Well, they have Lee's McRae, but uh, just that uh, dynamic there with ASU being here and growing, how has that changed over the last couple of years? Um, the, well, the, it's, it's exploded. I mean, the, the uh, success of the football program has driven a lot of that. Yeah. Um, because they're they're building bigger and better. Well, you can see the the construction that's going up on Stadium Drive. Sure. I, I mean, not only you know, not only do you have this huge uh, new facility that's going to be a a fantastic um, venue to to watch uh, football, you know, with the new field house and everything that's going with that. The new boxes that will be attached to that. But but then also you've got uh, two dormitories or maybe more. Yeah. I, I, I think there's more than that. Yeah. Uh, that, that's going up. It's a, I don't remember when they announced it, it was like $28 million projects, something like and that. Then, yeah. And then you've got as an outlier to that, although it's not being done by ASU per se, but the student housing, you see the standard, you see the rivers wall, uh, you see the, uh, King and College that's going up on, on King Street. Um, all of these new mega uh, apartment uh, apartments and student housing, um, and that affects us. You know, what if it's, and also the property that's going off the tax roll, uh, tax rolls that's being bought by ASU or, or you know, that the, the town has lost revenue, yeah. well, that directly impacts my operations because of funding, right? Because of funding, you know, because of the tax dollar, you know, of not getting, getting that. So that is, that is huge and that is hurt. And so, you know, you were be sort of, you know, the town of Boone is sort of being swallowed up in that, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, well, I think you, well, it's not an opinion. I think you look at the tax maps and see it. Um, but at the same time, you've got these new venues coming on that are private student housing that hopefully will help offset a lot of that you know and a lot of that stuff you know is above my pay grade but i'll just look at it from a practical standpoint it, that we are boone is exploding and oh, yeah you know there is very little property left um you know to actually develop um in in the town of boone you know so you either got to spread out or do something i don't know how you how you fix that problem. And, and you talk about those off campus housing facilities like the standard. And mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the name of the, the location out on 421, but it's been there for a number of years. Yeah. But, uh, um, but your officers re have to respond to incidents at those places. That's not ASU police right. taking care of that. That's your officers. And, right. and so, you know, I think that's a big thing too, with all of these new properties that come on, they're full of students. And of course there's going to be problems. And so I'm sure that's added uh, the workload to y'all, especially over the last five years. Yeah. Well, and two, well, you know, the, the, they were wanting to be 
to 20,000 students by 2020. Mm -hmm. They want to be to 25,000 students by 2025. <laughs> so, wow. you know, that's, that is huge growth. Well, with that growth, there's a downside to that. You know, there's, there's parking, there's traffic, <laughs> you know, do we need to <laughs> say anything else about traffic and parking? <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, and so you've got this, you know, Boone is so, sort of in a bowl. Yeah not just figuratively speaking, but practically speaking, uh, surrounded and we're in, in this little bowl. So you're going to either, you've got to expand that bowl somehow and, you know, not being able to go out and, um, you know, take in more property and stuff that it, it hurts the town of Boone not to be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and I don't know what, I don't know what there, there's always going to be this internal, I don't, I don't, and I don't mean to say that there's that there's bad blood or anything like that. I'm not saying, but there's a struggle with all of those different dimensions coming in together yeah, of how yeah. you deal with this. I mean, you want the growth, but at the same time, you're losing a lot of your neighborhoods. You're you've got problems. You know, now you've got student housing backed up against your neighborhoods. So the town council's been real concerned about losing neighborhoods and, and those type things. And there is, I mean, you know, there's a fine line between how to, how do you do this? How do you, uh, that's why planning is so important in the town of Boone. Yeah, I agree with you. It's uh, it's presenting its own set of challenges and, and I'll say this and we'll move on real quick. You talk about traffic after we get through with all the COVID-19 concerns and whatever normal is again, boy, traffic is going to feel about 10 times worse it's going to feel 10 times worse because there's been no traffic on the roads exactly the last little while and um as a matter of fact i'll say this real quick I, i'm going to touch base uh, probably next week with some of your folks there at the department and see if i can get some statistics on is this the least number of accidents that we've had right. in in this like month span in boone in maybe i dare not say forever but you know, <laughs> a long time. Yeah. Long, long time. time. More, more than what we would probably have records of. Oh, um, yeah. So you'd have to go back, uh, 25. Horse. Yeah. I, I don't know how long I started to say horse and buggy days. <laughs> well, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? All right. Just uh, a been long time. Just a couple of more things here. I debated about whether to ask you this or not. It's kind of lighthearted. Uh -oh. Um, you know, every town has, repeat offenders for whatever reason minor to major a lot of times minor you know between <clears throat> between the two of us we can we can think of a lot of folks that have had that problem i guess of reoccurring offenders over the years in your mind can you think and we're not going to name any names but can you think of the most number of times that maybe someone has been arrested for for whatever reason we we used to have a number of characters in Boone. I'll just say that, and every and every town does. Yeah. Oh yeah. But um, you know, as I look at the police reports and police blogs, I mean, the same names come up for five or six or seven years, and then those folks either pass away or yeah. they move out, and then it's the same old names again. Um, can you think of like what's the most number of times that you recall somebody just coming through the system again? Uh, you know, I know not not as far as number uh, number wise, and that may not a, that may not be the right way to ask that question. Yeah. But I just thought about it this morning as I heard a name, uh, saw yeah. a name in a police report, and I was like, I wonder. I oh, just yeah. wonder. Yeah, and and yeah, that brings to mind yesterday um, an individual that we we dealt we deal with, you know, just every day, you know, and um, y yeah, you. Like you said, every every uh, community has that those those folks that you're always dealing with, your repeat offenders, and you know a lot of this I will say also it has to do with substance abuse, whether it's alcohol or drugs, but I will also add in uh, mental problems. Mm -hmm. That that's where that's where we end up having to deal with folks who who have issues, mental issues that may go back even generations, but, you know, may go back 
uh, two or three decades that they've yeah. dealt with all their life and have manifested themselves in many different ways. And a lot of that may be homelessness. Uh, a lot of it may be abuse. Um, may, you know, a lot of it may be, you know, they don't, they don't have a job or because of their mental health issue or substance abuse issues that they can't hold down a job. Yeah. And no, and so it's left to law enforcement to deal with these issues, to protect the community, to protect the businesses, uh, because they're they're acting out or they're trespassing or they're they're stealing or whatever it is, and there this is you know this is going to take a lot of different folks working together to solve a lot of these homeless homeless issues and mental health issues that we're not set up to do. I mean, we just don't have the resources. Certainly yeah. law enforcement doesn't have the resources, but as a, a community, as a society, we don't have the issue or the, uh, the resources to, to take care of what's going on in our communities right now. Do you feel like it's about the same? Uh, <clears throat> is, are you dealing with that more now than 10 years ago, or is it just always been there? maybe gets uh, highlighted more now. Maybe, maybe that's it. I think we do have more homelessness than we did 10 years ago. I think, I think we do. Um, and certainly the, the problems that have come with that. Uh, we know, I know firsthand, you know, when we were trying to clean up the Greenway and a lot of the campsites and a lot of the drug issues that were going on and we were talk about repeat offenders, we were, constantly answering calls at at the at the homeless shelter and and whatnot for the same individuals trespassing and and all of that and so we had to get real creative about um you know some of the things we were doing and we were we were utilizing a lot of uh community um resources to try to alleviate a lot of these problems the hunger Hunger and Health Coalition is one of those, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, mental health facilities and, and, and programs that we've got. And unfortunately, with the COVID-19 situation now, um, it's, oh, that's it's, just... it's probably safe to say that that situation, homelessness especially, and, and the mental issues are probably going to get worse. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and we've and, seen a, a huge spike in, I mean, not, not, and I won't say boom per se, but overall, as a nation, yeah. you know, suicides are, are way up and, and depression and all the anxiety, all these things that go with um, national trauma, yeah. I guess you'd say. All right. Well, I, you have been so gracious to spend about 30 minutes or a little bit longer uh, with me today. And in, in, in closing, <clears throat> what, what do you want to leave us with? What will be your lasting impression of being at the helm of Boone Police Department for the last 10 years? It's been an incredible ride. You know, it's, uh, I've been so blessed to serve this community. I don't know, uh, I'll get choked up, but um, I messed up here. Well, you take but, your time if you need to. It's, <laughs> but, it's been, but it's been phenomenal, and this, and this community has treated me so well. And I hope I've done the same for them. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, from a media perspective, I have worked in local media before I started my own company since I was 18 or so, I guess. And I have dealt with a lot of law enforcement folks and uh, all of them have been great. But I tell you, you have always been a stand up guy. If I needed something, uh, you know, you always answered the, the, the text or call or email or whatever. And, and uh, man, Lord knows we've dealt with a variety of issues over the last several yep. years from plane sure crashes, yes. plane crashes to missing ASU students to uh, items, uh, the Best Western uh, incident that made national headlines. I mean, yep. we have, we, for a, for a, a town the size of Boone, uh, as you well know, it's incredible the things that we have dealt with and covered. And uh, man, I just appreciate everything you've done. So. I hope you have a great rest of the day. And uh, when will you start officially teaching at Malin? Well, the, well, the <laughs> whenever, whenever they go back. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we, we hope to, we hope to be able to run a basic law enforcement Academy this, this fall, hopefully August, maybe September. We don't know the time frame on that yet. I know that uh, there's a lot of folks that are looking forward to doing that. So 
if you're out there and, and you're listening to uh, to Kenneth's um, a spot here, then then yeah, if you're interested in uh, basic law enforcement training, uh, Malin's going to want to hopefully have a great program this fall. Uh, I will hopefully will be starting down there in the, in the next within the next couple of weeks. That's sort of sort of up in the air also, but. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be getting bored with in the meantime. So there's a lot, there's a lot to do. I I've bet, got a lot to do. I bet that honeydew list is pretty long right now too. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's that. <laughs> there's that. So, All right. Well, I'll let hey, I you, appreciate it. Hey man, I appreciate you. That is chief Dana Crawford of the Boone police department on his final day on this Thursday, April 30th. Uh, again, I appreciate him taking the time to be with us. I'm Kenneth Reese, founder, owner, and operator of WatagaOnline.com, and we'll catch you next time.